recording. Okay, we're uh, hopefully recording Richard, and uh, whatever we get is whatever we get. So, uh, welcome to the <laughs> April virtual tasting. Um, how are things with vintage? Things with vintage are very good. We finished crushing two weeks ago. Uh, 2020 vintage is looking very good quality wise, but quantity we're probably down about 30 to 35 percent. Oh. But quality very good, quantity a little bit less than we want, but that's what Mother Nature throws at you. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a dreadful January, but uh, February, thank goodness, was a little bit milder. Yeah. Right. The, the members will have in front of them uh, an order form with the nine wines on it, but um, there are three there that I don't think we need to uh, uh, taste or, or really talk about. The first one was, is the French, and uh, last time they sold... <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> this is one of my favourites. Fantastic. Yeah, that one just walks out the door, so we sold five dozen of it last time, so it's, it's not worth talking about. The sparkling. Well, it is worth talking about, but it's breathed. Yeah, OK. Easy drinking. But that's from overseas. So. Oh, OK, so we won't talk about it. All right. <laughs> but we'll enjoy it. And you can buy right. it. Now, um, in the newsletter, which I haven't finished quite yet, um, you're shown with some ducks in the vineyard. Now, are those native ducks, or did you import the ducks to clean up the snails? No, well, they're Indian runner ducks, so traditionally they're Indian, but they, there are lots of them in Australia. We actually saw a video of the Indian runner ducks cleaning up snails in a vineyard in South Africa, and because mm. we're certified organic um, and we had a snail problem, we thought we'd give them a bit of a trial, and they proved to be very good at removing the snails from the vineyard, so we've got a, we've got a flock of about 30 of them now. Do you get wow. a lot of problem with duck poo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's nutrients for the soil, isn't it? Yeah, Excellent. recycle. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, is, is there a YouTube clip of those ducks in action? Oh, I think there, I think there is. I'll have to check that out for you, Cliff. Oh, yes, please, yeah. Then, then I can send that out because people are, you know, with this uh, self-isolating business, they're, they're looking for all sorts of things to do, so, yeah. yeah. So the first one is this organic Pinot Grigio. Now, Paringa, that's over the road from Renmark, isn't it? Or over the river from Renmark? Yeah, so that's our tradition, our old family vineyard that my grandfather planted in the 1930s. The and um, so the Pinot Grigio is actually a single vineyard. It's a vineyard, certified organic. We're actually the largest grower of certified organic grapes in Australia. And we've had a Pinot Grigio planted for many years now, so the vines are nice and mature and it does pretty well up in the warm climate. It produces, we pick it very early, uh, it produces the lovely aromatic, delicate, delicate crisp uh, white wine. I'll try some of it. Let's have a taste. Cheers. Yeah, it's got a lovely... Um, yeah, like nice, colour. great green label. Actually, it's a uh, very similar colour to the salons. Uh, yeah. The closed salons colours. Linda. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, another story. Ooh. What do you think of that one, Linda? I like that. It's, it's got a nice, clean, crisp palette. Yeah, nice, that, clean finish. Yeah, and it's got a nice mid-palette strength, too, mm. that I like. Mm. I'm getting that... Real, there's something... That I'm getting, it's to me that indicates it's the Pinot Grigio style. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's different than the Semillons and the Rieslings. There's, a, yeah. there's just something in there. Yeah, it's got that sort of airy, pithy sort of grapiness to it. It's got a little bit of texture. And yep. The thing with all of our wine making is we really try and make it food friendly. And you know, I love a Pinot Grigio like this, sort of bit of salt or you know, nice Atlantic salmon or something. Uh, yep, it would go well. Time to compliment the food. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's very, very enjoyable. Okay, now the next one is the. Same price, isn't it? No, 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 that's prices. The members have got the prices on their list. Okay. Now, Wild Olive, um, that's an interesting name. Why Wild Olive? Is that because you've got pests of wild olive trees? 
down in McLaren Vale or, or what? Yeah, that's where the name comes from. We actually, so olives, if they're not in that olive grove, are actually classified as a weed. And so when they grow in the creek beds, uh, they're called wild olives. And um, we've got a couple in the vineyard, and I was walking along one day and there was this beautiful, huge wild olive tree growing in amongst some gums. And I thought that would be a lovely name for a wine label. And um, so we trademarked it, and it's, um, uh, yeah, a bit of fun because McLaren Vale is traditionally olives and uh, almonds. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because now it's predominantly grapes. And so for a certified organic um, brand, we thought it would be a really great name, the Wild Olive Chardonnay. We also do a Wild Olive Shiraz and this brand name as well. So. Yeah, how many wines have uh, Angos got uh, these days? Is it it's over 30, isn't it? Different wines? Uh, certified organic wines. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it would be up around 30. Yeah. Gee whiz. From a lot of organic grapes. They'll keep the reps busy, trying to uh, get people involved in those. Right, okay, let's try this one. Okay. That's what a very think? complete mouth feel. Yeah, that's nice. I wonder what the uh, wood treatment is. I'm getting a real Chardonnay. Um, Ooh, nice, rounded. But not big and gutsy. And it's quite elegant for a, Chard for a Chardonnay. <laughs> John would like it. <laughs> Ooh. I am still getting a little bit of a um, a hint of citrus or or Ooh. fruit, uh, like lemony lime. Yeah, I think that's classic Farndale Chardonnay characters. It's, it's, it's a warm climate for growing Chardonnay. It's not uh, like Mules or Tasmania or Yarra. So you do get some more fuller flavours. Um, we are barrel fermenting this. We do a portion of a wild ferment. So literally just put the juice in French oak barrels and let it sit there and it'll start fermenting naturally. So you get, that gives the wine a little bit of funkiness. Mm. Well, I just love the purity of fruit that you get. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very, very nice drink. Yeah. Um, what food? Food? Uh, I don't know, some sort of nice creamy pasta dish maybe. Yes. Yes, definitely. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, the uh, Chardonnay sales last time were, were very good, so uh, we can certainly recommend that one to to the members. It's actually it's from two vineyards, so it's from our good friends at Gentry. They grow some Chardonnay grapes for us, and my godfather actually grows some grapes for us down in the Canada as well. So, uh, yeah. Now, Gem Tree's Mike Brown, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, up near the foothills. And he, he was with uh, Randall at one stage, wasn't he? Warren? Yeah. In the early, early days, I yeah, think he really was. Yeah, early days, yeah. Okay, that one's uh, very, very pleasant. So, we've had two wines now, which are very nice drinks, aren't they? Yum. Now, the next one... Um, is the rosé. Uh, Linda loves the rosé and reading the tasting notes on this one, the bottle coming up, yeah. reading the tasting notes on this one, it's made in the Spanish style and that's where if uh, this virus hadn't got away, where we might have been. We might have been in Spain and we were Really impressed when we went to Barcelona and tried some of their uh, Tempranillo uh, rosés. Now this one's a fruit salad. What? What's it got? Four different varieties, Richard. Now why? Oh, well, that's cool. And it's kind of a fusion between Spanish and typical Southern French. So it's got your Tempranillo and your Grenache, which are very well. Grenache is French and um, Spanish. But then we've actually got a splash of Vermentino which is a very traditional thing to do in the southern, southern row. And we finished off with some carignan, which 
Carignan is a variety that's very vigorous, produces very large bunches, really juicy, juicy bunches, but also contributes just really nice, fine acid to the, to the rosé. That's just a lovely, crisp, clean, quite dry, it's not overly sweet. For me personally, I don't like a sweet rosé, but I can just just imagine drinking that on a summery summer afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. Well, we've still got a few warm mm. ones coming up. You chuck a few cubes of ice in there, I'm not afraid of doing that with rosé. Uh, yes, agree, agree. Yeah. That's just again a nice, complete mouthfeel. Ooh. Yeah. Now, um, the tasting notes, if I remember correctly, said less than two grams. So it sort of was bone dry then. It's, quite, it's definitely a dry rosé. We like, um, we've changed the way we've made rosé over the last 10 years. It's been amazing to watch the styles of rosé change from, say, 2006 when we started making our nine vines rosé. Um, that was a much sweeter style, but certainly in the last four or five years we've, we've really gone back to that pale, dry, crisp, seriously refreshing, you know, classic patio cheese butter sort of rosé. Yeah, lovely afternoon drink. <laughs> Are there equal quantities of the different varieties, or is there one that is uh, more predominant? Uh, the Grenache and the Tempranillo are certainly more dominant. I think there's about 11% uh, Vermentino, and I think it's only about 4 or 5% Carignan, so very much Grenache and Tempranillo. Dominant. Okay. No, very yeah. easy drinking. Now, um, the cellaring potential on this one, Richard. Drink it now. On the rosé? Yeah. Uh, Best selling potential is about five minutes. Yeah, that's why I was going to say. Why would you? Why would you? And I think that's why Kate's put this one on because it's a ridiculous price. In fact, it is cheaper than what it was last time. So. But no, I mean, rosé can last quite well, and you can put this in yourself for a couple of years, and it's pretty happy taking it out in the fridge. Oh, that's just yeah, just no, wonderful. No. Yeah, we'll be ordering some of that. Yeah. Now the alternus uh, name. Can you refresh us on that because it's two years since we've seen you? Yeah, so the brand name is, uh, we have other wines in this range. We have a Tempranillo, and we did have a Carignan, and a, and a Fiano and a Vermentino. And these are alternate varieties, so they're not your traditional French varieties that we use from Australia, like Shiraz, Cabernet, Chardonnay, uh, Semillon, uh, and so Alternatus is the Latin alternate. Uh, yeah. So alternate varieties, and Tempranillo, Vermentino, Carignan, Grenache is probably not an alternate variety, but the other three that are in the, um, that are in the blend certainly are. But those varieties are becoming a little bit more popular, aren't they? The uh, Tempranillos and the Vermentinos, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. They're just so well suited to the climate of the Clarendale that, um, yeah, there's more and more te Tempranillo in particular, I think, is a really good grape from Clarendale. And in the whites, yeah, if you aren't on Vermentino, um, two Italian white varieties do, do really well. Yes, um, well, Corio led the way with the Sanchevese, and from then on, everyone's tried everything else, so uh, yeah, well done. Great mm. You should be really pleased with that, that's just delicious. Mm. Very nice. I might and, just and, have a little bit more of that. Oh, okay. Now, uh, moving into the reds. We've got, uh, starting with the Cabernet, the family crest. Now, um, I've forgotten. Cornish, yes. Um, and there was the digging and, yeah. You, you have to refresh our memories, Richard. The family crest comes from, are you fifth or sixth generation, Anglo? I'm the fifth generation, so my great-great-grandfather started the business and his father was a copper and tin miner. That's it, yeah. And so the pick and the shovel in the family crest come from our mining origins in the early 1800s. The family crest itself was awarded to my great grandfather in the early 1900s as a family crest, where he incorporated the uh, pick and shovel with the grapes, uh, as well as the Latin Deo Volente of Income, which means God willing I shall conquer, which is quite intense for my liking, but um, 
It's probably quite appropriate at the moment. Yeah, yes, we're certainly in for conquering at the moment. Yeah. Okay, now um, another rumour that I heard is that uh, some of the brandy which goes into St. Aggie, the Virgin St. of Purity, is being made into hand sanitizer. Is that true? Yeah. And we donated some to the Red Mark Hospital and the Red Mark Medical Centre because they had pretty low supply. Um, but we haven't made it commercially. It was more of a, um, you know, they were in need and we, had, we were able to source the ingredients to make it. So we made a little bit and just donated it. Oh, congratulations. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Ooh. Now, Cabernet. Um, Cabernet last time was the biggest seller. And, yeah, Ben just got the numbers there. Yeah, 51, so four twelves of 48, nearly five dozen. Um, and that outsold the uh, Shiraz fruit. Yeah. Well, usually it's round the other way. But um, anyway, let's try this one. This one is uh, one year on. We have the 18 this year. And last time, two years ago, it was the 17. All right, so the 18 vintage... What can you tell us about it, Richard? Um, Style-wise, with our Cabernet, we really like a medium body Cabernet. So the alcohol in this wine is actually only 13.5%. Um, so it's, very, it's a very perfumed, lifted, mm. aromatic, mm. classic, oh, yes. that black currant, cassis, but also with that sort of chocolate character. Um, 2018 was a very good vintage. Um, it was warm and early. We did have enough time to develop some nice um, tannin structure in the skins and also um, really nice fruit character in the grapes. Uh, season, this is a mixture of French and American oak, um, 10 to 12 months in that oak and then it's a barrel selection. It's only from two different vineyards, one in the far south of McLaren Vale um, in Selleck's foothills at an elevation of about 150 metres, so it's quite high and um, it's actually really windy. So it does produce that really elegant perfume style cabinet. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of a floral, um, like a yeah. violet. Is yeah, um, I can get the violets as well. Yeah, that was my first aromatic sniff. Mm. Was, was the that beautiful, de delicate almost for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the Vale has got a very good record with cabinet. Um, Charles Wish with Jimmy Watson's and several others down there. Um, well, the this is lovely. Yeah. Can you name them, Cliff? Sorry, what was that, Richard? The Jimmy Watson winners for Cabernet. I think Shingleback, Scott and Tony, and. Uh, Rosemount. Did the Rosemount? Rosemount was it? Yep. Yeah, Rosemount was the blend, I think. It was a Cabernet blend. Traditional or something. Mm. Yeah. He's probably yeah. drunk them, Richard. He would know them. He would have drunk them. <laughs> but that, 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 that's, well, the Cabernet freaks in the club are going to go ape over that one. That is even better than the 17. It is. That is lovely. And the selling potential on that one? 20 years? It's youthful at the moment, and, and uh, you know, the acid and the tannin and the alcohol are right there and lovely framed. But this will certainly benefit from a couple of years in the cellar, and I'll certainly think it will be right in its prime in sort of 2022. Okay. So, buying some for the cellar, buying some for that as well. Mm. Mm. And um, the members will be very pleased with the price too, I would think. Now, um, oh boy, I'm going to have a little bit more. But I am a Cabernet. Mm. You are. Mm. Seeing I'm not working, I'm going to have another sip mm. as well. <laughs> now, um, the order form that the members have got have the family crest next and then the GSM. Sure. Now, uh, yeah, sorry, the family crest Shiraz and then the GSM. Now, um, 
When I poured them, I thought, ooh, the GSM is the lighter roan style. So what is your advice in which one should we try first? I'll go to GSM first, for sure. Okay. That's what I thought. Can you take my glass yep. and can you pop the GSM bottle on the table? Yep. You're a bit busy there, aren't you? You no, not, don't no, usually no. do all yes. this work. Great shit, man, as they say in the front bar of the pub. Great stuff. With great stuff. Mm. So, right, now, um, last year we, we uh, traversed the road, so we actually came to the realisation that... Uh, there's such variability with the French and the Australian that we actually prefer the French, which is that little bit lighter, softer mm. style. And my mm. impression is that a lot of winemakers are now moving towards that style so that you've got a difference between Shiraz and the GSMs. Now, is, is that true, Richard? It's, I haven't tried this one yet, but it's beautiful purple in colour. And I can see that the body is not as great as the Shiraz. So, your comments, please. Um, this is without a doubt my favourite wine in the portfolio. Um, Style-wise, I agree. We're certainly trying to make our GSMs more medium in weight. Um, it's 60% Grenache, 20% Shiraz, and 20% Mouvet or Mataro. Um, but certainly with this wine, we're looking for elegance. We're looking for lifted spice and perfumes, the lighter berry spectrum rather than the darker berry spectrum that you see in Shiraz wines, um, and just silky, soft, smooth tannins. And that's what we really work hard on um, uh, in the winery, the winemaking process, is retaining that really soft, silky, smooth tannin structure. Well, that is exactly what I've just seen mm. there. And that is very much like Chateau Neuf de Pape, isn't it? Mm. It is bigger and bolder than, than the French, but that perfume and the spice, yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah, that, that is a very versatile wine. You could have that with anything, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And you've yeah. you described it to perfectly, to a tea. Yeah, I don't think even Linda can add to that one. No. <laughs> perfume and spice and all things nice. Yes, Richard? Uh, the Grenache is from a Vineyard of Blue Springs, totally sandy soil, and yeah. it grows in that really sandy soil of Blue Springs, so it's the northeast of the town of Paraguay. It just delivers fruit that just has this lovely, lovely perfume and aromatic spectrum mm. of aromatics. Mm. Uh, just absolutely beautiful soil to grow Grenache in. And I think that's what gives this wine its character, is that soil that the Grenache is known. So is that a style that you enjoy making that you and you will consistently make? If Yeah, absolutely. It's a very consistent vineyard. And so we use about 10-15% uh, whole bunches in the ferment, um, which is very much a Pinot Noir winemaking technique. But you get lovely carbonic mass carbonic fermentation. On the, so that's like an intracellular fermentation within the grape that delivers a confectionery style character in the wine. And you see that really nice sort of yep. lifted confectionery lolly character, uh, which with the perfume is just a lovely, lovely um, lift out of the glass, and then that carries through into the palate, and it's just a nice, has a lovely, lovely medium mid palate. Yeah, the mid weight is perfect, yeah. And I think you're right, this, as I always, this, if I'm going home on Friday or Monday, I'll take this home, and it doesn't matter what we're going to cook, it will complement and is that something that again is drink now or mm, could it be kept? Uh, it will sell really well for sure. It's a wine that is uh, very, I mean, I love drinking Grenache, youthful Grenache and Grenache blends is really lovely, but they do evolve really well. And I think you know, this wine is good for the sort of the five to seven year window. It will go nicely to 10, but I think if it's in well, I think any wine that's been in your cellar for 10 years, you should probably open up and have a taste for these 10 years. Is yeah. yeah, well, that, that is sensational. Mm. God, yeah. We, we'll have to have you next year as soon as this cracks all over. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So this is, yeah. We're but really not doing these wines justice in the time that we've got, but yeah. uh, because Gee, they are beautiful. really, really uh, enjoyable and worth worth trying. So that that is that again is yeah a that, winner for that me. That is gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, now, Charles. Some call it Charles. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Oh, this one's got a few gongs on it. And this is the 17. So, oh, we must, yeah. Yeah. we're going to have a nice little uh, drink tonight at I dinner, aren't we? Will. we? <laughs> I think we will. Yeah. Oh, we better keep a few so that we can share. Have with... some tomorrow night. Yes. <laughs> What's the dance, Mike? Uh, tonight we have we're having a roast lamb dish with some roasted vegetables. Well, I'm certainly cooking a lot more Ooh. of our evening meals than I am yes. home. Taking the load off me. <laughs> How did the kids go with their flu shots? Mine. Yeah. Uh, um, the six-year-old, very brave, no problem. The three-year-old, we held down and she cried. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Oh. We, I had my geriatric flu shot the other night and... They must have been lined up all the way down Only Road, all getting their flu shots and all the rest of it. So, but very necessary and, and yeah. need to be done. Mm. Right, uh, the Shiraz. What can you tell us about this one? So this is the family crest Shiraz we're having. Yes. 2017 vintage, which was an unusual vintage. It was a very cool season. The whole season was cool. It was kind of like 1991. Um, and we had such gradual flavour development that we were picking Shiraz in the last few weeks of March. Um, and I see a little bit of that coolness of the season in this wine. It's much, it's spicier, it's sort of got that black pepper, white pepper. It's got fruit. Um, it isn't as dark and dark chocolatey fruit. Oh, dark fruit it's not that sort of really, really dark fruit spectrum. It's sort of, it's, it's bright and it has spice. Um, yeah, I think we did the right thing by changing that one with the GSM. Yeah, this is much bigger one. Yeah. Mm. That's a... That's yeah, as a, as a density, um, so this is 100% French oak, um, 12 months in the French oak. And um, it's, a, it's a, again, this is a barrel selection, so it's not a huge blend for us. And it gets a lot of old fine material. So our flagship Shiraz is the Medic Shiraz. And that comes from, you know, all the vines are over sort of 70 years of age. Uh, and any of the barrels that don't quite make it into the medic pull back into our family pressure. So it's yeah. quite a lot of vine material, which really lifts it um, quality-wise in terms of its price point. It's a very, it's a competitive price point where this wine is, but it gets a lot of very, very, very good cultural uh, material into it. Very nice, but, sorry, the Cabernet and the TSM, well, that's my, my prejudice. But, yes, but totally different styles, so yeah, yeah. you really can't compare. No, I know, but, yes, okay. Um, but that is, to me, a really that's big a, fruit bomb, a, sort of. Yeah, it's a good, honest, and it's, kind a, of and it's a And it's, to me, a winter wine, so you're going to have a, a really hearty roast or a nice Ooh. stew... Um, with that, just to that would go nicely with something to yeah. hardy. Now, last night we had the uh, war boy. Oh, here yeah, this one. Oh, that one. Yeah. This one. Which is the last wine on our order form. Now, as soon as I didn't tell Linda what uh, I was serving. I just poured her that and she said, wow! Mm. And that was the 16 which we bought from you two years ago, or a year and a half. Um, that, of course, was the most expensive one, and it's the most expensive one again, but it is even cheaper this time round because, well, we don't have any overheads, we don't have to pay for haul hire. And, mm. Uh, mm. So we, we just pass it on to the members. Mm. But 
I figured that um, in terms of keeping things reasonably short, sharp and shiny and not boring the members watching YouTube, that we wouldn't put it on. But uh, refresh our memory on War Boys. It's a funny name. Uh, yes, so War Boys Vineyard is the name of our vineyard in Home to our oldest clients, so the Warboys Vineyard Shiraz vines were planted. Actually, don't know when they were planted, but they were certainly planted sometime in the 1920s. So beautiful old vines, uh, very small bunches, small berries, concentrated fruit. Um, and the name comes from uh, my great, one of my great great grandfather's best friend is from the town of Warboys, which is just north of London. His old homestead was called the War Boys Vineyard in uh, Teacher Gully. Yes, These yes. It yeah. was a cold supermarket. So we took some of that history from the old Anglo history of the late 1800s and sort of brought that to the new beginning in, in Clarendale. Hmm, well, thank you for refreshing our. Yeah. So we thoroughly so enjoyed it. Now, I've gone back to the Shiraz and I'm, I'm getting a bigger, stronger flavour now. Probably because we did all these fairly quickly, but I'm um, really warming to the richness in the palate and the fact that it lingers. Now the War Boys last night lingered beautifully; it, it was superb. And but this one, at half the price, I reckon is pretty damn good buy. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. What just what would be the selling of the War Boys, Shirah? Warboys Shiraz uh, is a 20 year proposition uh, yeah. for us. Uh, it's very carefully made um, and it consistently is sort of rated 96, 97 points from our good friend James Halliday. Yeah. And it's a wine that's built, built to age and um, yeah, I think it'll go, certainly go. Go that distance, yeah. yeah. Can I come back to the family crest Shiraz and just ask you celery pot potential for that one? I'd say again, probably seven to ten years. Yeah. Uh, the thing I love about Clarabas Shiraz is that it's always approachable in its youth, but it sells so well. It's a, such a versatile region to grow the Shiraz grape that it makes these wines that have that beautiful primary characters, but if you put them a away in the cellar for five years, it just gets lovely, lovely secondary characters from that age. Mm. Mm. Oh, excellent. Well, Thank you very much, Richard, on, on behalf of the club for uh, supplying the tasting stock. And uh, I'm pretty sure Kate has uh, explained that um, we're doing some pretty good deals. It's virtually if you buy a dozen, you get a magnum, which makes it 14 to the dozen. So that um, ought to get the members uh, opening up the wallet and letting the moths out, because I hear that. Uh, the radio this morning, uh, sales of everything are down 25%. So, um, how, how are you going? The cellar door, of course, is closed, but um, uh, people still, is the wine getting out to liquor stores and then into homes, or has it really slowed up? Uh, things, we certainly saw the panic buying in, uh, in late March, but things have certainly slowed down through April. Obviously, we do sell a lot to bars and clubs and restaurants, and they're all closed. Yeah. Oh, well, it seems like South Australia's done the right thing and with yeah. the 300-odd uh, coming in today being uh, isolated for 14 days, we, we should be all right. So, fingers crossed, at least in a month's time, we, we might be back to somewhere near normal. It'll, it'll be slow, of course, but... Let um, me just say a big shout-out shout to... Some of the, uh, your Henley Wine Club members, my Auntie Marie. <laughs> yes. Marie we'll do, yep. I saw them at, uh, last week at golf. I will probably see them again tomorrow playing golf. So I will pass on your regards personally as well. At a distance, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marie's looking fabulous. <laughs> yeah, her hair is <laughs> quite a bit different. <laughs> Yeah, she yeah, looks great. Yeah, she looks great. Yeah, I talked with her uh, well, 100 years ago. So. Mm. Mm. so thank you very much, Richard, and uh, all the best. And we'll certainly put you on the list for next year. This mm. is crazy times. So 
Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you doing this for us, and hopefully we can do it in person next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your time. Stay safe. Stay well. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.